You know, I've been doing a lot of soul searching lately with the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! And I feel like that there has been something that's been driving people away. And I think many people can point it out, but I want to have a proper discussion on it because it could really dictate the game moving forward. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the craziest looking hair of the most, Avery of our 32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo, staying off that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher, the 1500 ladder. Hope you all are having a fantastic day. I want to talk about uh, what has been driving players away from the modern game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Because obviously the game is not what it was back in 2005, 6, 7, all the way on up to 2010. And I've noticed from my own personal subscriber base that that has pushed a lot of people from the game with what it is today. A lot of players, especially my subscribers uh, and even players in the game in general, I've noticed have been going to retro formats, whether it's GOAT, Edison, Hat Format, Dragon Ruler Format, which I still think is one of the worst uh, formats of all time. I was about to say worst archetypes, one of the worst formats of all time. But People love it for some reason, and just like how people like Tier 0 Necros format or Tier 0 Zoo format, but regardless, um, what has been pulling players away from the game? And I feel like a lot of it is going to change for the better once we hit 2025. I think that, kind of like what Cole 40 said, I think he made a good point, we're going to get a balance probably in the next four weeks or so. I think we're going to get it going into like late December or even January 1st of 2025. We'll get a fresh balance that will reset the format. We'll hopefully get some generic hits or so to Malice and Rizal. We just saw where Master Duel, aka Master Shits, get a brand new balance where they ban Pot of Prosperity and put Shifter to one. Keep in mind though that that game is best of one and it's dog water. And uh, yeah, blowout cards like Shifter are just absolutely toxic. And they also have Max C. But having a set like Supreme Darkness and having a fresh balance, I firmly believe is going to put the game in a world that is not so hand trap reliant, especially with what we're seeing in the OCG right now, where they're playing on average 10 to 11 hand traps, and it's more engine versus engine or archetype versus archetype. Yeah, maybe they're playing generic board breakers like Dark Ruler, Evenly Droplets, what have you, but at least it's not so hand trap reliant. And that is the biggest thing, I believe, that has been pushing a lot of players away from the modern game and pushing them more into retro formats. Because when you look at retro formats, especially much older and slower formats like like what we've done retrospectives on here on the channel shameless plug and go check out that playlist on the channel where we talked about goat format monarch format even airblade turbo which was a bit of an outlier because it was just an otk based deck but especially when you look at things like goat format where sure every deck was basically just good stuff dot deck where you played the same cards whether it was you know monster born premature burial mst you name it in your 40 card deck, even though those cards were the same, you could consider those even like the hand traps of the day because they were all played in the same decks. But every deck was different in the sense of Goat Control was kind of a Chaos engine -y deck, but it controlled the game through Metamorphosis and Scapegoat. You had Chaos Turbo where you played Thunder Dragon, Chaos Sork, BLS, what have you. And so it was more about player versus player and archetype versus archetype, like what we see now in the modern game than it just being, I'm going to skip your turn with a turn skip card like uh, Gimmick Puppet or uh, Artifact Scythe and the OCG, Dimensional Barrier, what have you, and then since you can't play, you lose the game because of it. Or even Heat Wave and Tempai, they just play that, you can't summon any monsters, they pass turn, you of course have to pass turn unless you're a back row heavy deck, and then Tempai just OTKs you. And I think people are very tired of that because... When you look at it in the modern, I don't even know if you could even call it the modern game, because it's like, where do you argue that the modern game began? Like, do you say it began with pendulums and just how fast the game got? But even then, I would say that the, the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! has evolved once we got Master Rule 5, um, where you could actually summon monsters from the extra deck to the main monster zones, things like that. So, like, do you just call it modern, modern? But semantics aside... Where do you draw the line of where people really got tired with it? You know, I think that people have had complaints over the years, but it's only been magnified because we've dealt with it for so long. You know, people very much hated Tier 0 Spiral format where you had an unkillable, what was it, Spiral Sleeper or whatever whatever it was. It's been forever since I've seen Spirals. 
but you had an unkillable main deck boss monster, and back then the deck could actually play through Ash, and then of course once it got hits on the ban list, if you just Ash the double helix, I remember everyone saying just Ash the double helix and you win, that was how you beat the deck. Now that's basically what branded is, you just Ash the branded fusion and you win, which is pretty funny how that's come to roost, but in a different deck. But now the game has more evolved from that, and even like what we've seen with turn skips in the past, like Rongo Bongo, Utopic, Zexel, Outer Entity, as a thought. We've had those things in the past, but now you not only have a smorgasbord pile of, you've got many different decks that you can pick from in this current format, but people are tired of what the top decks are. People are tired of Tempai. People are tired of Ubel. People are obviously tired of Snake Eye. People are very much tired of Fiendsmith, even with Lacrima being banned. The engine is just so good and you get so much advantage from it. And you get so much recursion in it, whether it's because of Lacrima Scarlet uh, Crimson Sorrow, whether it's because of being able to get your cards back um, with either uh, Fiendsmith, uh, The Fiendsmith or Fiendsmith Engraver, wh whatever the name is now. I can't even remember off the top of my head because I've just been taking a break from the game. But Lacrima and Engraver together being able to give you recursion and constantly have cards coming out of your graveyard, constantly being able to have a grind game and rebuild your board. And then if that's not bad enough, you've got 15 to 20 hand traps right now until you know we get crossover breakers and hopefully we'll be like the OCG where you're playing 10 to 11 hand traps. Ideally, I think most decks should only have to play nine, maybe 12, anything higher than that. I think it gets really toxic and I think this current format proves that. But then also having turn skips in the game along with an OTK deck that's just ignorant by playing 20 hand traps in the form of Tempai. And if you don't see your hand traps, then you're just going to get blown out by blown out by Ubel or Snake Eye. And a lot of decks too don't care about some of these hand traps. Like you look at Ubel, sure they add cards from deck to hand, but the thing is if you droll them, it doesn't matter. They have plays that they can go down or skill trees, as stupid as that term is. They have lines that they can go down that play around Droll to the point where it's almost like, please Droll me so I can go down this line. And it's very toxic. You didn't have that really back in these retro formats. Did you have bad, toxic FTK decks back in the day? Sure. Some that come to mind is Frog FTK, where because of the fact that we didn't have all the hand traps back then like we do now, you had very few outs to something like Frog FTK. You had Effect Veiler, which was at three, but in a 40 card deck. Seeing a three of in a 40 card deck that maybe you're not even main decking because you don't want to just auto lose to other decks or DD Crow. So at most you're playing six cards in your main deck that you have to see in your five card opening hand to beat Frog FTK. And if you don't see them, you're crapping on the floor because you're going to lose to a Rodent Toad and just hitting you 40 times in a row with a Mass Driver or whatever it came out to, 20 times, 30 times or whatever. So the point remains the same. We've seen these things in the past where they were technically worse, but now the card pool has gotten so expansive with all these hand traps and with turn skip cards, whether it's D Barrier, Gimmick Puppet, Nightmare, Heat Wave to a lesser extent, or you could even argue that some of these combo decks like you, Bell and Snake Eye, put up turn skip esque boards with how much interruptions they have. Not necessarily Omni negates, like people complain, oh, every deck is just combo, 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 put up a thousand negates, but that's not the issue. The issue is not negates. The issue is interruptions. Because when you have so many different ways to interact with the opponent during their turn, that's where it gets baby back bullshit. You know, you've got Varudos, Bringer of End Times, that can like, is an Omni negate and can pop like three cards. You've got the Unchained Abomination 3000 beat stick that can pop three million guards. You've got the Unchained Trap that if it's set on the field can pop a card. It, you activate it to summon out an Unchained and like you have all these interactions. And so now we get to the last point, which is interactions slash interruptions. Being able to interact with your opponent so much during your turn is absolutely toxic. And that's definitely not something you saw back in older formats, even in Dragon Ruler format. You know, at most you were activating a vanity's emptiness you were activating a sixth sense during the opponent's turn to maybe get some kind of advantage it's funny because you all know that my dad and i have played the game together for years well he gets so aggravated and tired of opponents playing on his turn whether it's flunder or even just 
you know, modern decks being able to, you know, summon out Snake Eye Ash on his turn, then play and set up Poplar and Divine Temple to get out a card, Flame Bridge Gout card. So my dad would just sit there and they'll play and he goes, is it my turn? And they're like, it's still your turn. He's like, oh, I thought you were doing all those combos. I thought it was your turn. And the opponent's like, no, 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 it's, it's still your turn. He goes, okay. And then he starts looking at the board. What does this card do? What does this card do? What does this card do? Like, he can't keep track of all the shit that's happening. Now, could he study up on the game and get better and know what all the cards do? Sure. And I've told him that multiple times. Like, you can't go into a, a, a tournament ignorant of what all these cards do and expect it to work out because you could very well get a judge called on you for that, which is another bullshit thing. But that's also my dad's fault for playing Mystic Mind for, what was it, four or five years while it's legal? So he could just be ignorant to what all these cards did. And as long as he knew what cards negated what and what cards popped what, then he could just sit on Mystic Mind and not have to worry about anything. And so he became a scrub because of it. Like, he was actually pretty good. I remember he made day two of YCS Miami back in, what was it, 2014? Whenever windups were still good and uh, um, Atlanteans were good, he made day two of YCS Miami with Chain Burn. Like, that takes knowledge of the game. Sure, you can say Chain Burn is just a no-skill autopilot deck, but you still need to know kind of like what cards do what in the meta. Now he just doesn't know what nothing does because he plays Master Shits all day. <laughs> so, at the end of the day, I think that going into 2025, there is a big chance for the format to recover and be healed if Konami hits the right cards, if they kind of reel in Rise All and Malice just a little bit early, like what they did with Infinite Forbidden, banning Lacrima basically out of the gate a couple weeks after it came out, reeling back these decks, absolutely obliterating Fiendsmith, Snake Guy, and Bell stuff, and just honing back all these other decks that cause toxic game states, whether it's turn skips or what have you, and then we go into Supreme Darkness, a set that is not going to cause a lot of power creep because the hero stuff is cute, but like it's not, you know, completely turning Yu-Gi-Oh on its head. The Mold Charming Nyarlis is whatever because it's really format and deck dependent. It's not all that great. We're going to have a decent set that I'm sure vendors are going to be upset about because it's not going to sell well, but it is what it is, and we're going to be in a much better state and then we'll have the retro formats to fall back on if something doesn't go well guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below i've been thinking about this for a couple of days now and it helps that whenever you're drinking crown and pepsi all of the inspiration ideas just flow into my brain so guys thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video